Okay, so the basics of momentum. First off, the symbol for momentum is P, lowercase p, not to be confused with power, which we just did in the last chapter, which is an uppercase P. Lowercase p is momentum. The, the equation for momentum is mass times velocity. So check it out. The unit for mass is kilogram. The unit for velocity is meter per second. So it gives us this unit of kilogram meter per second. That's the unit for momentum. Now, I want you to recognize how similar this is to other units we've looked at, namely force. What did we measure force in? The Newton. What was a Newton? Kilogram meter per second squared. And then if you ever forget what that is, all you have to remember is uh, F equals MA, so mass is kilograms, acceleration is meter per second squared. Now, in the last chapter, we had the joule. The joule is kilogram meter squared over second squared. So look at how similar these units are. So this is momentum, kilogram meter per second. This is force kilogram meter per second squared and then this is work and energy kilogram meter squared over second squared now there is no shortcut unit for momentum you have to write the whole thing out kilogram meter per second okay there's no shortcut like there was for force and work and energy okay next thing the word inertia very important word it's similar to momentum in that inertia depends upon mass and so does momentum, but there's a big difference between inertia and momentum. So first off, what is inertia? Inertia is the ability of an object to say, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. No, 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 no. What's the one thing that gives an object the ability to say, no, 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 I don't think so. Mass. The bigger the object is, the more mass it has, the more it can say, uh, I'm not going to do that, right? So if you look at these two rocks here, so we got a little rock right here, and then we have a big rock right here. Uh, which of those two objects has more inertia? The big one, simply because it has more mass. If you walk up to this big giant boulder and start pushing on it, guess what's going to happen? Nothing. Now, could you, could you affect the motion of this little guy? Yeah, you know. Now, what if you have a big giant object with no velocity? What would be the momentum of this big dude? Nothing. So notice that this big guy, even though he has a lot of inertia, he has no momentum right? So it's possible to ha for a little object to have more momentum than a big object because the big object just isn't moving. Does that make sense? So the one thing that affects inertia is mass. It's the ability of an object to say, I'm not going to do that. I don't think so. Okay, now next screen. Okay, so now that we've defined the basics of momentum, momentum is mass times velocity. Uh, I have a little confession to make. Not a big confession, but a little confession. Back when we studied forces, I told you that F net, the net force on an object, always equals MA. Now, whose law is this? F net equals MA? Yes. Newton. And he came up with it probably like around the year 1660. But back when he came up with this law, he did not say that F net equals MA. He did not say that. Do you want to know what he said? He said this. <clears throat> so Newton, when he originally came up with his second law of motion, which is F net equals MA, what he said was the net force on an object equals the change in momentum of the object divided by the time it takes to change the momentum. Now look, it works out to be the exact same thing. These two equations right here are identical, and I'm going to show you why. Now, momentum is mass times velocity, so what would change in momentum be? 
change in momentum if we take the mass to be constant, which it will be. In this class, you're not going to have an object where stuff is falling off of it. You know, like a real world example would be uh, uh, a rocket is fired. What's going to happen to that rocket as it goes higher, higher, higher? It's burning fuel and the mass changes. Not going to happen in this class. Every object that you are given is going to be a constant mass. So if that's the case, what would change in momentum be caused by? If, it, if it's not caused by mass, it's going to be caused by velocity. So change of momentum is going to be mass times change in velocity. You get it? Now, come down here. So what did we just say change of momentum is? It's going to be mass times change of velocity, like that. Now, what is change in velocity over time? Change in velocity over time is what? Acceleration. Acceleration. And there's the MA, right? So Newton said this, but, but these two equations are the same thing, OK? All right, now the word impulse. Now, as if physics is not challenging enough, you need to remember that impulse is simply another way of saying change in momentum. It's a fancy name for change in momentum. So impulse equals change in momentum. There are two ways to calculate what impulse is. So we're talking about impulse. All right, the first way to calculate impulse, if impulse is change in momentum, you can just go momentum final minus momentum initial, which would be mv final minus mv initial, right? Because momentum is mv. So change would be momentum final minus momentum initial. Okay, what's the second way to calculate impulse? The second way to do it, looking at this equation, what would the change of momentum be? It's going to be net force multiplied by the time. So look, like look at this look at this diagram right here. So we have this hand that exerts a force what would change the momentum of this object more? That force being exerted for a time of one second or, this, or that force being exerted for five seconds? Five seconds. So you can kind of understand it that way. If you take the net force on an object and multiply by the time that the net force acts for, you will have change in momentum, which is called impulse. Got it? Okay, final screen. All right, a new graph for this chapter. Force versus time. So we have force on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. And this is, pretty, this is what you would get. Like, see this, this uh, picture here? This tennis ball hits the racket. Look, as the tennis ball first comes in contact with the racket, the force gets bigger, 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 and then the ball starts to come off the racket. Smaller, 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 and then right here is where the ball comes off the racket. Now, if you take the area under a force versus time graph, what would the area be? Well, how do you calculate area? You go base times height, right? So notice that you're multiplying force by time. What is force multiplied by time? We just did it. It's not momentum. It is change in momentum. It's the change in the momentum, which is the impulse. Area under a force time graph, when you look at what you're doing, it works out to be change in momentum. And the slope of this graph is, not, is nothing. It's not going to help you at all. The only important thing on a force versus time graph is the area.